What's up guys and welcome to Wall Street Millennial. On this channel, we cover everything related to stocks and investing. In this video, we're going to go over some of the greatest gains and losses on the Wall Street Bets forum so we can learn from other traders' experiences. Before we get started, make sure to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. First off, we have user Hryfandy, who lost 50% of his portfolio, or roughly $270,000 over the past 3 weeks. His account peaked on February 17th at over half a million dollars, but has steadily decreased since then. He posted a screenshot of his positions with 18 out of 22 being in the red since he bought them. Unfortunately, he had to blur out some of his positions in penny stocks and crypto related stocks. Wall Street Bets bans the mentioning of stocks with less than $1 billion market cap, OTC stocks, low volume options, cryptocurrencies, and SPACs as to avoid people trying to use Wall Street Bets to pump and dump low volume securities. Out of the OP's 22 positions, he only made a profit on 4 of them, and all 4 of these winners were penny stocks banned by Wall Street Bets. His biggest losses were from calls on NNDM, NEO, Corsair Gaming, and BNGO. He owns 70 15 strike calls on Nano Dimensions expiring on December 27, 2021. Nano Dimensions is a disruptive technology company that uses 3D printing technology to make electronic circuit boards. Nano Dimensions has been one of the best performing stocks of 2020, with shares increasing in value by more than 14 fold, taking Nano Dimensions from a penny stock to a legit company with a $4 billion market cap at the peak. Also, in late 2020, Kathy Wood's ARK Invest bought a stake in Nano Dimensions in their ARK Autonomous Technology and Robotics ETF. But the share price seems to have gotten a bit ahead of itself and has fallen more than 50% since its peak in early February. The OP's other big losses come from calls on other similar stocks, including NEO, which is down 39% from the peak, Corsair Gaming, which is down 29%, and BioNano Genomics, which is down 51%. Despite losing 50% of his portfolio, not all hope is lost for this Wall Street Bets user. Most of his options have long dated expertise. For example, his call he is down the most on doesn't expire until December of this year, and some of his NEO calls don't expire until January of 2022. So while it's taking some pain in the short term, if he diamond hands the entire position, he could still come out on top, although it looks like there's only a slim chance. It appears that this Wall Street Bits user has no plans on locking in his losses anytime soon. Despite the pullback, he still feels good about Corsair, although he admits he probably bought into it when the stock price was too high. But now that it's pulled back, he intends on holding on for the long term. We wish you luck on your future plays. Next we have user Kai Soren, who posted a very nice gain on a heavily shorted stock. That stock is Academy Sports, ticker symbol ASO. Academy Sports is an outdoor sporting goods store. It was founded in 1938, but started growing aggressively and adding new stores in the 90s. As a traditionally brick and mortar retailer, it was hit hard by the pandemic and has a very high short interest. However, it has rebounded strongly and in the past 3 months, the stock has more than doubled. This Wall Street Bits user held 43 calls with a $25 strike price, expiring on April 16th. Today, ASO stock crossed over the strike price and those calls are now in the money. This is a classic case of buying a call when it is out of the money and profiting massively when the stock rises to become in the money. By buying them when they are out of the money, you get them at a cheap price, but once they become in the money, their delta increases and gains are outsized. For this Wall Street Bets user, that meant a 73% gain in one day of almost $11,000. This gain garners much support from the comments section, with user Cheese Myself joking about the southern nature of the play on Academy Sports. He is likely referencing the fact that Academy Sports heavily focuses on selling firearms and ammunition in their stores. Congratulations on your gain. Next off, we have user Loud Ninja19, whose strategy of buying at the peak and selling at the bottom has cost him $18,000, or 85% of his portfolio over the past three months. On January 27th, at the peak of the GameStop short squeeze, he bought shares at a roughly $275 cost basis. Right after he bought, Robinhood banned the buying of GameStop and shares started tanking. On February 5th, he finally threw in the towel and offloaded his shares at around $65 for a 75% loss. The loss would not have been nearly as bad if he had bought earlier or sold later. After he sold his position, GameStop shares rallied another 144% as activist investor Ryan Cohen fired the old CFO and legendary investor Keith Gill aka Roaring Kitty doubled down on his long position. Unfortunately for this Wall Street Bets user, his paper hands caused him to miss out on these gains. And the OP's bad luck did not end with GameStop. He also YOLO'd into Tesla in mid-February right before the shares corrected down 30%. He says that if Tesla goes down another 30-40%, he will sell out and pile into Palantir. Fellow Wall Street Bets users suspect that Loud Ninja is cursed and any stock he buys is guaranteed to go down, so they beg him to not touch Palantir. When they ask how he could have made such horrible trades one after another, he blames the smoothness of his brain. Cognitive brain activity takes place in cells in thin surface layers of the cerebral cortex, so having a greater cerebral surface area allows for more cognitive activity. 
As humans evolved from lower life forms, their demand for cognition increased faster than a skull could grow, so the brain evolved to have wrinkles, allowing for more surface area and the same volume of skull space. This Wall Street Bets user appears to think that his brain has not benefited from this evolutionary adaptation, and he still has the smooth brain of a lower life form. We wish you luck on your future plays. Next, we have a Wall Street Bets user who has made some massive gains by holding GameStop stock. He has 2,000 shares of GameStop currently, which is now worth $307,000. Following the mini short squeeze that happened two weeks ago when the old CFO was ousted from the company, GameStop has been on trajectory straight up. Needless to say, any shorts that were still holding out have probably been wiped out at this point. This is all to the benefit of the OP, who now has made a staggering $178,827 just by holding his stock. His cost basis was $61.65, which means that he could have bought in after the most recent short squeeze started happening. You didn't need to have been able to predict the squeeze beforehand to have made these kinds of gains, but instead have been able to recognize when it started. Now, the OP is sitting on a very nice 145% gain in just two weeks on a stock trade. This gain shows the power that can sometimes happen when traders practice diamond hands and hold their stocks instead of flipping them for a quick buck. User One Solution Cruising ponders whether GameStop can once again break $200, $300, and $400 a share. Based on the other comments, it seems like most people think that is definitely possible. Congratulations to everyone who held GameStop since the latest squeeze. Next up, we have the user All In Every Day, who lost 100% of his portfolio value, or $25,000, when his Tesla puts expired worthless. When he saw that the big short investor Michael Burry was shorting Tesla, he went all in on 550 strike puts expiring in late December. Tesla ended 2020 at around $660, well above this strike price. And even now, after a significant sell off, shares are still sitting at around $600, which would have to drop another 9% before hitting his strike price. While it is possible that the sell-off continues and Tesla does drop to these levels in the next few weeks, the OP's puts have already expired worthless. This just goes to show the inherent risk of options as you not only have to know which direction the stock price will go, you will also have to time the trade correctly to avoid worthless expiry. At the very least, it's not wise to put your entire portfolio value into one options position. While this $25,000 loss is surely gut-wrenching, it's merely a drop in the bucket compared to the $38 billion of losses short sellers have suffered in 2020 alone shorting Tesla stock. This just goes to show, you should never bet against Poppy Elon. Finally, we have a huge gain by playing Snowflake. Snowflake is the high-flying tech unicorn that IPO'd last September, when it more than doubled immediately. The company is a data warehousing service provider that makes it easier for companies to make their data available and usable to their employees who don't necessarily have experience with computer systems and coding. It drew a lot of criticism from some analysts who said the company was ridiculously overvalued based on its market cap that briefly topped $100 billion. However, this Wall Street Bets user noted that a share lockup within the company would likely put a lot of selling pressure on the stock last week and went all in on puts. The bet played out incredibly well, and he doubled his money in only a couple days to the tune of $50,000. User Laetus points out that the entire market, especially tech, was selling off last week. So the drop in Snowflake and the subsequent gains on the OP's puts may just as well have been from the tech sell-off than from the lockup expiring. Eric23 admits that this is true, but either way, he is $51,000 richer and that's good enough for him. Some people, such as user Blue Dino Raptor, are new to the idea of playing lockup expiries. The idea is that on a certain date, large insider shareholders are allowed to sell their stock that they were awarded while working at the company. If enough of these insiders choose to sell, that could drive the stock down on that day. A similar lockup expiration is going to happen with DoorDash soon, and user AirRig23 is currently holding some puts on that stock as well in the hope to profit off the selling pressure. However, it is worth noting that this is a very risky strategy that can easily backfire. Congratulations on it working out with Snowflake. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this video. If you like the content, make sure to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm, and subscribe so you don't miss our future videos. Also, leave a comment telling us how you are playing the recent sell-off in the market. In the meantime, make sure you're following us on Instagram, TikTok, and the second channel, WSM Research, and we'll see you in the next video. Wall Street Millennial, signing out.